some dress is a little different. Um, from back here, the face paint was kind of scary, but actually up close, you can see it's all leaves. And it's kind of silly, but this is the kind of stuff that I do to distract myself when I'm feeling pretty upset about something. Um, instead of going and self-harming or binging or making myself throw up, I do something that's going to take a lot of time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the feelings are going to go away, but it's taken up enough of my time that I really don't want to do those other things. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes all you need are 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe even up to an hour of distraction. And do something that you love. For me, that's painting, um, or I will play with a pet. Hang on, I'll get my little guy here. Yeah, uh, he's a little afraid of my face. He doesn't really know what to make of it. But, um, yeah, I, I'll play with these guys. And I'll go for a walk. I'll go, not just like a little walk around my block. I mean like a really good hour-long walk. You know, something that really picks up a lot of energy. Go, go do a walk in a place that you normally don't walk. So you get to see different things. And... You know, you spend your time looking at different things on the side of the road that you normally wouldn't look at. Because all too often, when we go on this in the same place over and over again, um, things are so repetitive, we don't actually take time to look and see what's around us. And you'd be surprised. I, I remember once, um, I was kind of having one of those manic days, and I decided to walk 50 kilometers in one day. And... It was on a highway, and I'd driven this highway many, 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 many times before, but walking it, you see things that you just don't see on a regular basis, and it was amazing, and it really opened up my eyes. Another thing you can do is get one of these. They're called a worry stone, and you can see it's got a little indentation there. And all you do is you hold it in your hand. It fits really good in your hand. Put your thumb on it. And you just rub it. And that can take up quite a bit of energy, too. And if you're Wiccan like I am, or even if you believe in the power of crystals, um, certain color crystals have different properties that can cause um, relaxation, that can calm you. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. So I, I have a bunch here. I'm not exactly sure what most of them mean unless I look them up. But, you know, just different ones for different things. And um, you can get those in a lot of novelty shops or tourist shops or tourist traps, as I call them. Um, if you like to write, write about how you're feeling. Write about what you want to do. Write about what you would see. Um, don't actually do it. Um, you know, write in detail what your plans are and then fold it up and, and put it somewhere away that you can't see it for a while and then if you're having those feelings again, write another one. Rip it up. Burn it up. You know, get rid of it. Um, when you're feeling really good, write yourself a type of love letter. Tell yourself how much you're worth it. Tell yourself all the things that you want to do when you recover. Um, write down what you like about yourself. Write down what your friends like about you. And then when you're having a bad day, pull that letter out and read that letter. I do something similar to that when I have a psychotic episode. I beforehand, if I know it's coming, I'll write down all the things that I know are safe and that I make sure that psychotic me knows that it's still me writing the letter and not 
somebody else. So that's good for me. Um, another thing that I used to do is <coughs> I would take uh, I would take a red marker and mark the lines where I wanted to cut all over my body. Now for me that was everywhere from my legs to my stomach to my arms. Um, make it a permanent marker so it's there for a while and then you know if people see that because you can't scrub it off and you have to explain to them what it is well is that any worse than having a scar there? So a lot of times cutting is an impulsive thing and you know if you can just take those 15 minutes to think about something else you don't want those scars for the rest of your life um, something else I do and I don't really admit this to a lot of people um, because I still get the urge to self-harm I haven't in two years except for one episode um, a couple months ago where I was psychotic and I did cut open my leg because I thought there were bugs in it but that was a little different um, but uh, something that I will do is I will take tweezers and I will pull the hair out of my legs and that really hurts and so if it's pain that you're looking for that will make your eyes water and um, but some therapists, some therapists don't like that because that's just another form of self-injury. Um, I don't see a problem with it as long as you don't go too extreme with it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you're not causing permanent damage. Um, you're pulling the hair out of your legs, so I mean that's a good thing for girls anyway. And uh, there's no blood, there's no permanent scarring, so you know that's what I do. And. I think there actually is a condition that people have that pull hair. Um, so yeah, don't don't pull the hair out of your head or anything like that. You know, stick to your legs, and uh, you shouldn't get into any trouble. Um, something else I like to do. I'm not big on cleaning, but I do like. Sorry about the shaky cam. I do like to organize when I'm feeling really upset. I will tear apart a closet that's really messy um, and I will just take everything out and I will wipe everything down and I will sort everything, alphabetize everything and put it all back nice and neat. And that can take quite a few hours, it can take a whole day and you don't even realize the time that's passing. And um, that can be really distracting and before you know it you know you're not thinking about those things anymore so that's another good thing um, it doesn't have to be a closet it can be anything um, I have two big fish tanks so sometimes I'll tear those apart and I'll clean those and that takes me quite a while too and then I usually have a bunch of water on my floor so so then I have to mop my floor so that's always fun um, something that I have always enjoyed is going on a picnic. Now, okay, if you have an eating disorder, that might not be the best thing to do, but sometimes being out in the open, out in the fresh air with friends can make it seem not as stressful. When I was deep into my de eating disorder, um, I didn't like restaurants, I didn't like eating at a table in front of family, um, because I felt like I was really close to people and I didn't want to watch them eating. But on a beach, you know, if you pack a sandwich, you can get up, you can walk around, you can eat the sandwich, you're outside. It's, um, it's beautiful. And I don't know what the beaches are like where you live, but here they're not that crowded. They're beautiful, but we just don't have a lot of people go to them. So that's another nice thing you can do. Um, 
can't think of anything else. What am I thinking? Uh, that's about all I can think of for now. Those are things that have worked for me. I used to be really active, so I used to do a lot of exercising. Um, but again, if you have an eating disorder, that can be triggering, and I don't recommend that. I would say only if you are a cutter or a self-injurer, that is something that you should look at. Um, I would bike 50 kilometers, 25 kilometers. I'd be gone from 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, and I wouldn't have time to self-injure. Um, also, for me, and I think for a lot of people, um, I used to get the urge to self-injure late at night, and that was always a problem because, of course, I was alone in my bedroom, everybody was asleep, I didn't want to wake anybody up. Um, I used to have really bad sleep habits, well, I still have bad sleep habits, but um, what's really, really important is to get on a good sleep cycle. You know, go to bed early, try not to go to bed any later than 10 o'clock, get up 7, 6.30, you'll be tired, you'll want to go to bed early, you won't even think about that. And that's something that you really want to strive to get into a good routine for. Because when your body is functioning really well, your mind functions really well. And that goes for eating the same time every day. Try to eat something in the morning. A lot of us skip breakfast. I did. I was guilty. Um, I still don't like eating breakfast and some days I don't, but I do feel better on the days that I do. It doesn't have to be anything heavy. Um, you know, eat an apple, eat a peach. Peaches were always my favorite. And, yeah, get up, you know. Write down a basic routine that you can follow every day. It doesn't have to be rigid. It doesn't have to, you don't have to fill every half hour time slot. But definitely, you know, get up. Get up at 6.30, 7, you know, go to bed, 9, 10 o'clock. And you know what? I'm not a morning person. I like to stay up late, but <sighs> night is when I do all my worst thinking and my best thinking. But you know, that's when I get into trouble. I used to, I used to roam the streets at night, and I always got into trouble because I couldn't sleep. So, you know, I beg you, get some sleep. Things will look much better in the morning. If nothing else, your mind will be clear. If you eat something, if you stay on a regular routine and a diet, your mind will work better, your body will work better. You'd be amazed after a week or two weeks or three weeks how much better you're functioning. So, you know, like I said, write it down. Um, just a few things each day that you're going to do the same time each day. And uh, you will feel a lot better. So, I'm going to stop this now. I've rambled. I don't know if I've made much sense. I didn't write anything down. I just kind of painted my face and thought, oh, I'm going to do a video. So, I don't know if I've repeated myself. I don't know if this is helpful. I hope it was helpful. And again, if anybody wants to message me, um, I'm always around. I am going back to work August the 13th, so I might not be around as much to answer emails and messages. But uh, I always get back to everybody within 24 hours. So, you know. I know some people out there are struggling, and I know it's hard, but, you know, remember that stars shine the brightest in complete darkness, so don't forget that you're not alone, and there's always somebody out there willing to help you, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.